Good morning. So it is Sunday and this is going to be a shorter, just one day vlog. We had Michael's grandma passed away and so we had her funeral on Friday. So there was no vlogging that day. And then yesterday it rained all day long. So we really didn't do anything vloggable. So I almost wasn't gonna even do a vlog for this weekend, especially since I had a bonus already out on Friday. Um, but I think since today is supposed to be nice and sunny again, um, I will have enough to do to justify having a vlog. It's just gonna be a shorter one. So <clears throat> one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run to Lowe's t this morning and get the ant guards because I just refilled these little hummingbird feeders a couple of days ago and they're already full of ants. So the ants have found them. Um, so I'm gonna get some ant guards and then I think I'm gonna leave one hanging up there with my little bird feeding station, but I'm gonna move the other one down to the garden because there is a hummingbird that's been in the yard now um, for the last few days and it keeps coming down to the garden and flying around. So I think I'm going to hang one. Let me show you. There, from the center of my little cucumber trellis. Um, so I'll have one there and then I'll still have one up there. Um, but I am gonna get ant guards for them so that I can keep the ants out. So that is on my list to do today. And then also I need to pick up one bell pepper plant because I did find one of mine had been kind of uprooted. So I don't know if it was, if it got washed out when it rained because we got an inch and an eighth, I believe it was yesterday of rain. So I don't know if it was that or if something actually dug it up because it was like a little chunk of clay in a little pit where it had been. And it was not planted in clay. So I thought that was a little weird, but whatever it was, it's gone now. So I am going to pick up another one. And other than that, I don't know. I mean, I know I'm gonna do garden stuff and since it's warm now, I may just go ahead and sow all of my beans and my corn today. I am also meeting Michael for coffee this morning, um, but he usually does like his cleaning and housekeeping stuff on Sundays to prepare for the week. So I know he'll be busy doing dishes and laundry too. So I won't be with him all day today. And I thought about maybe going to Perryville because I picked up boxes so that we can move grandpa. But I think I'll save that for sometime this week. I just need to get the boxes up to them, but I don't know if I will do that today because since it's actually going to be nice today and then it's going to be storming again tomorrow, I'd like to get stuff done around the yard. Um, and I still, the last time I mowed, never did get around to doing all of the weed eating or the trimming. Um, so I need to get that done too. So just some stuff piddling around the yard probably today. But anyway, I'm going to drink my coffee, get dressed, and I need to pick up my groceries at seven and then I'm going to make a run to load. So I will catch up with you then. Honestly, is there anything better than a garden center? Look at all the plants. And it looks like he's here unloading some new ones. I do not need any more flowers, but look how pretty. the ones that I have at home since I only ever get like two to three hummingbirds this way I can just put a little bit in them and it doesn't go bad before they eat it because I really should be refilled every couple of days oh this is cool <laughs> probably not necessary this is what I'm here for of those, one for each one. <laughs> That's a little cute one. <laughs> I like this too.
That's a neat idea that I have screens on the outside of my windows so I can never use them. I have a little finch sock and they haven't really used it yet, but if they did, I would consider getting one like this instead. Okay, I'm thinking about putting some dahlias in with my Cosmos and Zinnias too. The question is which ones? God, only two plants for $11. So I ended up with these smaller ones and then these for the bigger ones. So there's two plants in each so I can split them on either side. And then got a double of the white. I wish they had two of these, but they didn't. So I got, this is like what I already have growing in pots, except these are gonna be bigger, I think. But then I can have a pollinator garden, but also have cut flowers. And now here I am thinking about blueberries because I had one in a pot once and it lasted for a couple of years, but it does need full sun. So it's another plant that I'd have to put in my front yard. And I'm just not sure where I put it. I kind of want blackberries too, but they don't have, I guess I'd have to do two different kinds. I grabbed one of these Maybe I'll put, I grabbed two of those, maybe I'll put one back and grab one of the blackberries. Well, the blackberries must be popular because they don't seem to have any. I have found pretty much everything else except blackberry. Oh. Gonna have to keep looking somewhere besides Lowe's, I guess. Well, no blackberry bushes that I could find anywhere here at Lowe's, but I did find some actual like grown and mature blueberry bushes that already have some buds and some berries on them. So I swapped out for those and now I'm going to swing by Menards and look and see if I can find any blackberry plants there. Well, here we go again. So this is all they have at Menards. So it's just like a dormant bare root plant. So I can't find a whole pot like I had before with the blueberries, but I found two that have good signs of life coming out of the stem. So I think they're going to work. So I'll take them home and get them planted. All right, I just dropped Michael back off. So I'm gonna head home and start working on planting stuff. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do before I plant um, the blackberries and the dahlias, since they're all um, bare root tubers, I think dahlias, I need to look into that because I don't think they're bulbs. I think they're considered like a tuber. I will look it up and I'll put it on the screen here so I can make sure I'm saying it correctly. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna soak those in some water for a bit um, while I get the beans and the corn all put out. And then I will go and get those planted into the ground. Um, I'm a little disappointed in the blackberries just because I was hoping to get some actual like bushes that were already potted and ready to go in the ground just like I did with the blueberries. I am not, I just don't know how many more years I'm going to be in this house. Like, you know, Michael and I want to buy a house together or he might potentially buy the house next door to me too. I have a very elderly neighbor that lives next to me. Um, so when her house does go up for sale, um, if he could buy that and move in next to me, that would be an awesome situation for us too. We are kind of non-conventional people. So um, that way I wouldn't have to lose everything that I have put into this house, especially into the garden with the greenhouse and all of the perennial plants and everything that I have put out and then have to like start all over again. And that yard also has an excellent, excellent planting area where I could massively expand my garden because the entire, like where her driveway is, on the other side of her driveway is a similar to my front yard where it's just in full sun all day long but unlike my yard her yard is actually level it's flat it's not a big hill like mine is so it is really the ideal spot for a nice big garden but that is neither here nor there um, my point is if we do end up selling and buying a house together then these blackberry bushes I probably will never get anything off of them because they won't even mature in time so we'll see i they were only i think seven dollars a piece because of the fact that they were a bare root plant 
so it's not like I'm really out anything if I don't get any blackberries off of them, but we will see. It, it could be a while yet. Um, you know, what's, what's holding Michael and I up from doing it, we were, initially we had a plan. So our four year anniversary happened just before his daughter and then my oldest son graduated high school. And so that put us down to two kids still living at home. And so we were planning once Mia and Hunter graduated high school to go ahead and sell our homes and buy a home together at that point. And of course that was, um, so Hunter and Mia graduated in 2023 and that is the year that all of the interest rates started hiking up and then home prices also were through the roof and they weren't coming down and they still are not coming down. So could we afford the higher payment together? Yeah, I mean, Michael's an engineer. His income is more than double mine, um, you know, so I feel confident that we could afford it. But the problem is our payment would go up quite a bit. Like if you added my current house payment and his current house payment together, our payment on one house that we buy together would still be significantly higher than our current two separate payments are. And if you combine our two houses together, whatever house we buy would be less space than the two combined houses that we have now. And so it just doesn't make logical financial sense for us to do it. And you know, yes, we want to, you know, get married and have the typical, you know, married life together and all of that. But, you know, since we're older, you know, he's 41, I'm getting ready to turn 39 here in a couple of months and we're past the point of having children. So, you know, we don't have that sense of urgency, like, oh, we need to get married and start a family and all of that. So we're both content with staying exactly where we are and waiting until the time is right. So that's kind of where we're at, but it remains to be seen, <laughs> all things considered, whether I will be in that house long enough to see those blackberries really produce any fruit. But anyway, I am probably about halfway home now, so I will catch up with you once I get there and we get out to the garden.
All right, so my initial plan was to put these blueberry bushes in here where I have everything else, but I was looking at the tag and it says they get four to five feet wide. So I had always kind of thought about putting rose bushes down along here because I have this one little strip yet that I have to mow all the time. And it's a steep hill and grass is useless. I mean, you can't eat it. It serves no purpose other than a ground cover. Now the sun's gonna come back out. So I'm probably gonna be completely washed out. So if you can still see me, I decided I'm just gonna go ahead and put my blueberry and blackberry bushes just down this hill. And I'll just like mulch around them so it can still be grass around it um, without having to do like full on landscaping, but they'll have plenty of room to spread out. While I'm out here, this is the neighbor's house that um, I was talking about it would be nice if Michael could buy. And so it's a little slope, so you can't really see, but on the other side of that driveway, there is a huge side yard that goes like all the way back. It's a pretty deep lot, honestly, and it goes all the way back and it is in full sun all day long. So if he were able to buy that house, I would plant that entire side over there would just be a garden. It would have it would have everything. It would have all of the vegetables. It would have um, any like berry bushes, pollinator garden, all of that stuff. Um, and if you go far enough back, there's probably even enough, enough sun that I could plant. Sorry, I'm whipping around this microphone. <laughs> that I could plant maybe a couple of apple trees or something as well. So it would be the ideal setup if he were able to get it. So we will see what happens.
All right, I am all done and everything is cleaned up and I really hope you can hear me because it has gotten very windy out here and I'm not mic'd right now. So we will see how this even turns out. But I thought that I would go ahead and give you a full garden tour now that I have everything done, everything planted that I need to have planted. So I'm gonna take you around and show you the different places where I have things planted in the yard, both vegetable garden, flower garden, herb garden, all of that good stuff. So let's go I take have a to look. start with my lovely lilac bush. It's been in the last couple of vlogs, but it's finally almost done. Sadly, these things only bloom for about two to three weeks. It is the best smell in the entire world. I love it, it's my favorite, and it's almost gone. So sad, but once it is done blooming, this bush will get a trim. And then this is my primary garden. Um, this is in, so I will show you real quick. All of this surrounding my yard makes gardening a huge challenge for me here. And this little strip is the only spot in the yard where I can confidently get the minimum six hours required of sun per day for all of these um, sun loving summer vegetables to grow. So that is why I have it here. And then the greenhouse, I we just put in last year in February. So this is my second season with the greenhouse. So let me show you what I have here. Let's start over here. I've got like a little mini herbaceous border and I cannot remember all of the flowers that I have in here. So I will go in and double check because I keep everything in a notebook and I will put it up on the screen, the ones that I don't know for sure. Um, so these ones that are blooming right here, they are not salvia. And I actually can't remember if this is Russian sage or the one behind it is. So I will put that on the screen. Um, these little teeny ones on either side of it are asters. And then this one I believe is the yarrow. And then this one right here, I do not remember what that is. So I will look it up and I will put it on the screen here. So I will make sure that you are able to know everything that's in this little border, but I'm hoping that in another couple of weeks, we'll have some more blooms coming out of here. This bed is going to be for the summertime, my squash and pepper bed. So I have bell peppers right here. That's the one I picked up at Lowe's today because the one that I started from seed that I had planted got dug up or washed out or something. So I had to replace it. But these two and then these three little guys right here are all the ones that I started from seed. And then these three are jalapeno peppers. And then um, right here in this row and then this little group here are the lettuce starts that my uh, boyfriend's sister-in-law gave me. That is those, I've got those planted in. And then the rest is the lettuce and the kale that I had planted. I had a caterpillar in here a week or so ago that had eaten a bunch of stuff off. I found it, got rid of it, um, relocated it. So it is away from the garden now um, and everything is starting to look healthier again. Um, the lettuces that had been eaten off are kind of reviving a little bit. Um, and then on the corners, I have like basil and marigold, and then I have red onions planted in all of the holes around. And then on this side, we have peas, which this side, honestly, the peas are doing a lot better. They must get a little bit better sunlight where they are, but I have peas. And then these little guys here are cucumbers. So I have this big trellis here where they can go all the way up and over. And then over here, I have the exact same thing. Um, and then in this bed, um, again, basil and marigold on the corners, but then I have beets in all of the other blocks around this. And then inside for the spring crop, we have some black seeded Simpson. I do have a YouTube short that I just put out a few days ago. Um, so when you're seeing this video, it'll be probably about a week and a half ago by that point. But if you want to see the wilted lettuce salad that I made with the first cutting of the black seeded Simpson, it is there. Um, and then I have also some Swiss chard, which is still pretty small. I have a couple of little bits that I could harvest now. Um, but inside of all of this or in between all of this is black beans. And then this side of the bed are my radishes. I have just the plain red radish and then daikon radish. And then I planted um, green beans in with all of this. So green beans and radishes are great companion plants. Um, this will be, once all of this spring vegetable crop is gone, this will be my bean bed. And then behind me here, this is my tomato bed. So I have out here, in pots, I have brandywine tomatoes, and the reason those are in pots is because they are my favorite tomato. And at the end of the season, whenever um, it's getting a little too cool for them to be out here, 
I will relocate them inside the greenhouse with a heater and keep them going as long as possible. The two tomato plants that I had in there last year, we had tomatoes all the way up until January when it finally got too cold for the heater to keep up and then we lost them. So pretty cool that we could keep tomatoes going for that long. Inside this bed, let me actually kind of peek in here so you can see without this mesh in the way. So we have an early girl and wait, no, sorry. That one's the cherry tomato. This is the early girl. And down there is a big boy. And then I have nasturtium planted in between. Great companion plants help to draw the pests away. We have the yellow onions planted in behind. And then on the sides over here on both ends, um, kind of hard to see because they're still tiny, but I have some leeks planted. Outside of this bed, we again have some basil. I have um, marigolds all the way across the back and then carrots all the way around here. And then my little compost bin. And then here in front of the greenhouse, this will be the last thing in this garden bed. On either side, I have lavender. This one died off last year, so I got a new one this year, which is why it's so tiny. And then in here, I have zinnias. So kind of a little pollinator helps draw some of the bees and butterflies. And then my little bee and butterfly bath. And then inside the greenhouse, I have this up to keep squirrels from getting in because I planted corn in here. So you saw me earlier, but I have the peaches and cream. And then there's another tri-color tri sweet corn that I put on this half. Um, mostly I did it that way because I went to Menards first and found these. And then when I was at Lowe's, they had the peaches and cream that I was looking for. So I went ahead and bought those. So I'm trying both and we'll see which ones I like better. These are, I believe, butter crunch lettuce heads. And then these are romaine, which obviously have bolted and are going to seed. And I will see if I can't maybe collect some seeds from those. And then a tiny little rosemary plant that actually was in here last year and just made it through the winter. So, so moving on, I will show you some herbs and stuff that I have out. So this is all cilantro in this cute little um, planter. This was my grandma's and she bought it when I was a little girl because I don't know, it reminded her of me, I guess. So um, after that uh, tornado that hit their house and we kind of had to disperse everything because they had to demolish the house, um, she went ahead and gave this to me then. So I like to plant something in it every year. And then over here we have dill in these. That one, let me zoom in super close here. I don't know if it's gonna survive. It's starting to look very puny. This one is taking root. Um, here we have fennel. I have four planted in there that might be a little crowded because fennel bulbs do get big. Um, I wasn't sure all four of them would make it, but so far they're doing good. And I also had four in this one. It looks like three have survived. And then we have the bird bath, also with rocks in it. So bees, butterflies, and wasps can't drown if they get in it. Um, here we have two strawberry beds, which I did pick my very first strawberry out of here earlier and it was delicious. And then of course we do have lots more that are green. So we'll have some more ripe ones here very soon. Got a little marigold plant in each one of them. This bunch back here is mint and I do, you know, what they say about mint is very true. It spreads like wildfire. So I pull a bunch of it out every year and kind of leave a little corner, but it's important to keep it in a bed so it doesn't take over your garden. And then oregano, which honestly it is spreading just like the mint. So I have to take some of it out every year and I probably will cut it back some more because it has spread even more around this side than it was last year. And then on this side, I have teeny little thyme that I started from seed. And then I see, let's see if you can see it here, like that little bitty sprout there is basil. So I had basil in here last year. And um, so quite a bit of it looks like there are some seeds coming up. So that is great. And then here we have some garlic chives and they have also overflowed <laughs> into the back of my little rose garden. So um, the knockout roses, if I had it to do over again, I would have chosen a different color because this does not really fit um, the color scheme that I have chosen for the other flowers in the yard anymore, but it's okay. Here is my pollinator bed and I did expand it this year. It was just this little center part here. This year I expanded it and added this little part on. And so I have Cosmos and Zinnia. The Zinnia seeds are just starting to sprout some of them in here. The Cosmos I did start from seed indoors because they take longer to bloom than Zinnia does. So I wanted to give them a head start. And then of course the dahlias that I just picked up today, which let me get closer here. You can see some of them have little starts that have already poked up or they were um, in packaging like that. So that is great. 
And then these are short little English daisies that are all like a pink and white color. I have Coreopsis Shasta daisies. That is a peony plant that I just put out last year, so it is not a bloomer yet. And then these five little things here are all flocks, which the butterflies absolutely go crazy for. And then I have two butterfly bushes. Um, this one is a replacement for one that has been there for like four years now. And it finally, um, I don't know, with all of these weird weather patterns and stuff that we've had, it finally died. Um, it, it gave up the goat, so I went ahead and bought another one and replaced it. This one also is, I think this is its third season. And, um, you know, it's it did come back, but it's definitely less healthy than it was for sure. It should be the same size as that one by now. And then we have the clematis and my little bird feeding station. Got the hummingbird feeder that is suet feed. And then over there, right in front of my kitchen window, I have the bird feeder with the sunflower seed. And then over here, it's just a repeat of what is on the other side. Um, the Shasta daisy did not come back, so I haven't seen them in the garden center yet, but when I do, I need to pull that up and take it in. Lowe's will replace it. Um, this is the Coreopsis, uh, the peonies. This plant is in, I believe, its third season. So last year, I did have, I think, just one flower, and it looks like this year I'm going to have several. So it is due to be blooming any time now. And depending on the weight of the blooms, I may have to find something to kind of stake it with. And then, oh, how in the world did I miss this one? A little tuber from Adalia got left out. <laughs> um, so anyway, like I said, mirror image of the other side. We have Cosmos, we have Zinnias, we have Dahlias. Um, that caterpillar I was talking about, I don't know if it was the same one or a different one, but it had eaten off um, several of my Cosmos. This one I wasn't sure about because it had eaten everything off and it was just the stem, but it is starting to sprout some green back. So I'm really excited to see that. It looks like we saved it. All right, so up here, I don't know how well you can tell from the camera angle, but I have a very steep front yard. And when I moved in, the very first thing I did was cover all of this up and mulch it because I was not mowing that. And so I planted a bunch of vinca so that it could spread and take this over. Um, it has been seven years now and it has spread quite a bit, but it is still nowhere close to covered. And this is the only place in my entire yard from about here over that is full sun all day long from the time the sun peaks up in the morning until about 6 p.m. So it honestly is the best and most ideal spot for a garden. However, it is a big slope and it is the front yard, so I don't plant up here, or at least I haven't in the past until now. And so what I have decided to do is all of the like vining plants that spread out I thought would be great to plant up here because it's low to the ground. It's not gonna get big and bushy. So I've done some acorn squash. I have some watermelon in here. And then down closer to the street, I have a couple of pie pumpkin plants. And then let's get a little closer over here. So I have kind of some more pollinator friendly stuff. I have salvia. And then these two are um, black eyed Susan. And then this is a purple coneflower. I had one on the other side too, but it did not make it. I didn't see it come back this year. We decided to try a couple more tomato plants up here. So this one is a German queen, which is an heirloom variety. Um, one thing I will have to do for this, and also I've got another one on the other side, I will have to find a way to protect it from the squirrels because that is the big problem that I have in my yard. And it's why the tomato plants in the back are undercover because we have thick squirrels here. And as soon as it gets green tomatoes on it, the squirrels will steal them, take like a bite out of them and leave them lay. And so you never get tomatoes, but tomatoes love, love, love full sun. The more hours of sun, the better for tomatoes. So that's why I wanted to try a couple up here and just see what would happen this year. But I will have to fashion probably something out of um, chicken wire. There's my little garden kitty, Miss Emily, um, in order to keep the squirrels out. So we will cross that bridge when we come to it. And then here in these trellises, which I originally had in the backyard, but I decided to relocate them. I have butternut squash on either of those and Miss Emily and the weed eating that I have yet to get done, but the day is still young, right, baby girl? You gonna weed eat for me? You gonna chew it all off? All right, and then another peony plant, also last year's um, plant, so it is not going to bloom yet. Next year, I will probably see a bloom or two on it. And then the other side of all of the flowers. And then my other tomato. This one is a better boy. 
Hello, my darling girl. And then the other side, you can actually see one of the hills. I believe this is a watermelon and right out there is a pumpkin. And then we have today's spontaneous purchase that I had no intention of ever putting out here, but here we are. So I have the two blueberry bushes, which honestly, I did not realize how massive they would get. So I was kind of like, is it worth spending $30 for these? Am I gonna get enough blueberries for it to actually make it worth it? Because I found a place where I can get berries for an awesome price, but they get very big. And from what I read, um, you can get about five to 20 pounds of blueberries off of one bush. So I would say it will pay for itself. And then the blackberries, I sadly could not find any like actual potted plants. So it's kind of hard to even see them, but I ended up having to go with the bare root. Um, I did choose some that I could see just a little bit of growth trying to poke out on. So I was confident they would do well. So there will be no fruit from those this year, but from what the package said, I should be able to get some fruit off of them next year. All right, that is it. That is everything that is growing in my yard this year. That's the flowers and the vegetables and the berries and the herbs, all of it. So now we get to do what gardeners love best, just sit back and watch our garden grow, pull some weeds, keep the pests away, and keep our fingers crossed for a great, healthy, thriving, and prosperous season. So. If you want to see what happens with the garden, be sure to subscribe and I will see you back here next week.